yesterday I said I'm gonna do the camera tapping. I didn't actually tap on the camera. My bad. I was tapping on the screen. Screen tapping. What I was doing with screen tapping, this is this is camera tapping when you actually tap on on the camera. song this past Friday. If you want to check that, 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 if you want to check that out. The link is in the description. I'd really appreciate everyone who everyone who checks that out. Thank you, thank you, please and thank you. I just made a short for the first time. Well I remixed a short for the first time on my other channel, my second channel. The link is in the description for that. This girl was just talking about the difference between confidence and delusion and all that sort of stuff. It's a very interesting process, like, making that sort of video. I, I wanted to provide commentary, like, add my own two cents, but I didn't know how. Like, if I can explain it briefly, you can do this green screen thing where you can have your frame within that video so that the person's video will be playing in the background and like a little cutout of you will be there and it's like it's like footage of you reacting right and you can talk but your voice will be like kind of talking over the video so it could kind of be like a mess so i don't know how to have the video play for like 15 seconds however long like so that the, the clip that i want to play and then have it stop and then for like the rest of the 60 seconds i talk while maintaining that green screen thing so like when the video ends it just ends on the frame so it's still on the so it's still in the background it's still in the background i can then talk like my little cutout will be talking I don't know how to do that. So I just uploaded a 15 second video of my facial reactions to what she was saying. I'll figure it out as I get along, go along. I might have to use a separate editing app. I wish there was a way to do that in the YouTube studio. I mean, in the YouTube app without having to do some external app. Maybe there is. I just need to figure that out. I was looking at all the, 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 the little tools, the editing tools, and I didn't see anything that would allow me to do that. But again, it's my first time using it, so maybe I missed something. If you know, let me know in the comments. Yeah, she's basically talking about girls who, who like, they won't be looking very good. And I don't, there is an attractiveness scale. There are rankings, there are girls who are prettier than other girls, and so on and so forth. Same thing with guys, there's people in general, there are pretty people and there are not so pretty people, it's just reality. But then what you get is a lot of girls who rate themselves more than they actually are. So maybe you're a 5 and you're rating yourself an 8 or a 9. And look, you can be a good person and you can be... And that doesn't necessarily determine... the trajectory of your entire life or stuff like that, but you have to be realistic, especially when it comes to dating. Um, it's very important to acknowledge that, look, I'm not. I'm not like some supermodel or anything like that, but I've got this going for me, I've got this going for me, I've got this going for me. I'll find someone that I like and uh, get into a good relationship, get married, have kids, all that wonderful stuff. It's just, you don't have to be some sort of And I didn't 
too generous. I don't know. I like to think I'm a seven. It, 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 it could compare me to other men. Yeah, this is good. A lot of handsome men, of course. But I, I don't know if I can. Yeah, I can't go get beyond them, but I think I'm a seven. Maybe that's 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 vain. I'm not sure, but out of confidence or an eight or a nine. But by the way, I really I'm the the shaven look is starting to grow on me. I wasn't sure at first. I was like, hmm, was this a mistake? But. I'm looking at like old footage of myself with the beard. It looked so scruffy. It looks different now that I don't have that anymore. It's crazy. When I had it, I thought I looked good. Now that it's gone, I'm like, man, that thing looks scruffy as hell. I look clean now. I might. I can always grow it back, but I'm gonna have to like really make sure that it's well kept. Trim it. Um. <laughs> I might go for like a goatee situation or like I have a, I saw someone with a situation where they had, they had hair here and then they had a bit of hair here and then they had a mustache. I might do that. I might try that and see how that works. But that's in the future. For now, I'm going to keep the clean shaven look. I like, I like how this looks. I think this looks nice. Where's that for? I, I was showing sure. I was showing y'all a photo that inspired me to make that decision. I don't know where it is. Did I lose it? No, oh, not. Eh, anyway. We'll find it. We'll find it, we'll find it, we'll find it. We'll find it, we'll find it. I realized I don't have to keep the toilet roll on, on the camera, like, all the time. I've said this before, and I just forgot that I said it, and I kept doing what I was doing. So maybe I'll forget this realization again. We'll see. But I don't have to keep the toilet roll on the camera all the time. It can just be a trigger. And then I can do other things. Um, but yeah, so going back to the thing of confidence versus delusion. It's, she was saying confidence makes you more attractive. Delusion makes you look crazy. It makes you look insane. You know? When you're like delusional, you just sound crazy to people. Whereas confidence is inspiring and you know, you, you believe the person when when say genuine confidence, you know what I'm saying? So well, it's not always the case. Some people won't see your vision. But yeah, a lot of these girls, man, oh my gosh. You have to be practical, you have to be realistic. Everyone has to be realistic. There are like, for me, it's like there are, oh my gosh, there's so many guys ahead of me in the line in terms of just the, the g g genetic uh, equity. They just look better than me. They're the taller, the more muscular, whatever the case may be. And I'm, I'm aware of that. Again, I don't think I'm ugly. I think I'm like a seven. But especially now that I'm shaved, I, I didn't. Man, that beard, man. I liked it, but it looked so scruffy. Looking back at it, it looked, it looks scruffy now. This part feels dry. I think it's, it's flaky. Let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see it. He put some Vaseline. It felt kind of like... Oh man, I think I put too much on my fingers to me. It's a bit better. Look, when it comes to your physical looks, when it comes to your physical looks, it's not everything, okay? You're not defined entirely by your 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 body. 
obviously it's an important part of dating like people see you with the eyes first before they they see you your body before they see like your soul and all that sort of stuff so it is a factor it's not the only factor so as when one goes around running around saying i'm a 10 i'm a 10 you're not like come on <laughs> it's okay most people aren't most people you're not alone like you just not do you know how but like it's ridiculous it's that everyone can be a 10 everyone's just running around calling themselves 10 it's like it's not it's not practical you would be calling myself a seven like realistically there are a lot of handsome guys out there where would i rank if, if there was like a ranking a world ranking of good looks what, where would i finish or where would i rank on that on that on that list i don't know i might not even be as i might be like a six point something there are a lot of handsome guys out there it's okay it's, like, it's not something i lose sleep over not all these men more handsome than me it's like whatever man good for them i think i look good enough even if i didn't there's so many other things i can do to make myself more attractive so even with women there's so many things you can do to make yourself more attractive to men. So many. You, you can be in shape for one. Like, that's important. Like, if you're in shape. If you're kind, warm, inviting. You're not argumentative. You're not combative. You're not always gossiping and, and causing trouble. Like, like, that makes you instantly more attractive to a lot of guys. I'm telling you, man. A lot of guys will, will pick that over some some smoke show who's crazy she's hot but she's crazy well okay some guys do go for the crazy girls even though they're like they're hot but they're crazy but it's not wise and they they suffer i think the wise men know that uh, no, that one that one is probably but i've been in situations i'm thinking of two in particular where if i if i had kind of put my morals and my principles aside a lot of guys do that by the way and i just do. said what she wanted to hear and, and did what she wanted me to do i could have been in some sort of relationship with i'm thinking of two girls in particular with, with these girls but i wouldn't have been happy and it, they would have probably driven me very crazy and one of them i'm so uh, both of them probably would have cheated on me they, they both have history of promiscuity and cheating and all that sort of stuff so you know i would have played myself it's not worth it you're not really winning if you do that if you make those sort of sacrifices so you kind of have to be like nah i'll wait i'll wait for someone else because you ain't it honestly i just have my minimum requirements and if a girl meets those minimum requirements in terms of what attracts me, like, and, and she's just this great person, like, pers her personality is good and all that sort of stuff, then, oh, let's go, let's go. You don't have to be a 9, you don't have to be a 10. You know what I'm saying? Or a, if, you, if you can get with a, like a, even a 6 or a 7, but she's a great person, you won, you've beat the game. And one thing I've noticed, no offense to any anyone who might be genuinely pretty watching this, but some of these pretty girls are stock up, dude. Think about it. Your whole life, you're being told you're pretty and you know you're pretty. What does that do to someone's mindset, their psychology? Unless they come from a good family and they've had experiences that have grounded them, and, you know, they've got good principles and whatnot. If you don't have that, like, your head is going to blow up and you're going to become very arrogant. You don't want to deal with people like that. Those are that are genuine, generally speaking, that's so annoying, bro. You want people that are humble. Where's my, where's my toilet roll? Did I put it back? You want people that are humble? And don't take themselves too seriously. They don't think too much of themselves and stuff like that. You want those sort of people. Those are the nice ones. To get. What Christ said, humble yourself or you will be humbled. 
Life will humble you on your way another man. So it's always important to remember that you ain't all that. You are not all that. And when, when Christ came down in the form of man, it said he wasn't handsome. There was nothing about his physical appearance that was particularly significant. Because, and that was for a reason. It says, so that men, like, like when it say men, they mean human beings, would look at him in that way, like, oh, what a handsome, what a powerful guy. Da, 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 da. Like, you didn't get that sense when you looked at him. Like, he was a very strong, very powerful guy. There are real historical documents of leaders, uh, emperors writing about him. Like, this guy is causing us so much trouble. And he's all over the place. He was very influential. But he didn't have that appearance. So even with, with, with like you as an individual, don't place everything on your looks. That's what a lot of girls do. And, it's like, and they're lying to themselves because they don't even have that. <laughs> so it's, just, it's such a strange situation. Like, if you're telling yourself you're the same, you're the same, you're, you're not even that. And you're just coming off as crazy. Lean into your, your, your character. You know, I've, you meet girls, right, who aren't delusional. They don't, they, they're, they're not kidding themselves about uh, their looks. They know where they rank on, 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 on these, 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 are, these rankings, and they're fine with it. And, and what you get is an individual who just taps into her personality, and, and those are the ones that are fun, and those are the ones that are good to be around. You like being around them. And... And they work on themselves, and and those are the ones that end up with someone. They get married and they're happy. And they're not being too selective. So it's important, obviously, to to like pick wisely. You don't want to just be with anyone, but. You don't want to be in a situation where no one is good enough for you. You know, you're just constantly like rejecting people, even if they're good options, but you can't see it. You don't want to be in that position. I always tell myself, never get yourself in that position. What I'm doing for me right now is I'm giving myself time. I know what I want, so when I when I find that individual who I feel like gets along with my mom, number one, my mom and I were having a conversation the other day about the importance of finding a good woman who brings peace to the family, not chaos. Because my cousin married an interesting character, let me put it that way. She is difficult. It's a problem. And I got me. just know that it's a problem. It really is. When you marry someone, you're not it's not just you who's marrying them, it's your whole family that's marrying them because your whole family has to deal with them now. So this woman that my cousin married, she's bringing so much drama to the family. A lot of people are stressed. My mom was, and my mom told me, she was like, well, when you get married, please, please just marry a good woman. Please, that a woman that I like and that I can get along. And my mom is a very peaceful, kind, soft lady. You know, she's very cute easy to get along with. She's not... She's... It's hard. I was saying it's hard to get on a bad side. But yeah. So, one, it's very important that I, I, I find someone that works well in the family structure. I'm just comfortable with like, I like hanging around with we can do a lot of things together. So yeah. Then I wanted to be pretty, of course. But again, these things are subjective and <laughs> 
it's it's subjective, but there's also like a biological factor to it. There there are things that determine what makes a person attractive. Genuinely speaking, you know, symmetry and all these sort of things, curves, the size of your breast, the size of your bum. There there are reasons for that. The reason why men in particular. But it is, it's not an exact science, and I found myself attracted to different types of women over the years. So, I, I, the, the, the main things are those core tenets of like, she gets along well with my mother, we have similar interests, we can have great discussions, we like, we genuinely like hanging out with each other, we genuinely like each other people and we just like hanging out and she's good with the, she's good with kids because you know I want to be good with my kids and she's very family oriented and all that sort of stuff and then the looks are a bonus the looks are the things that are attractive to me at first but assuming that we're meeting it depends on the context you meet in. You know, if this is a friend that you, if if there's someone you know in your personal life, and then you get to know her, and then you fall for her after you get to know her, that's a different situation. So obviously, it wasn't her looks that attracted to you at first. But if it's a situation where you're meeting someone in some environment, you're like, oh, that person's pretty, and then you get to talk to them, they happen to also have all these other things you're looking for. That's that's a blessing. So it, it depends on the context of how you're meeting her. When you're meeting and so on and so forth. Yeah, don't be delusional, people. Don't be delusional. Be realistic about your strengths and your weaknesses. Be very I'm so happy that I shaved. Every other day, that's going to be my schedule. Every other day, I'll shave. And then, yeah. Yesterday, yesterday I wrote four poems. That's, that's crazy. It's actually madness. I wrote four. And I was like, I could do this every day. Potentially. It depends. There was a poem I wanted to read to you. Should I do it now? Hold on. The poem I'm about to read to you is not my poem. So this is this random poem I read on this website. I was like, this poem is terrible. In my opinion, at least. No offense. But I, I just wanted to get your opinion. Because I was so confused. I was like, what, did, what is going on here? And I was just like, it's such a great example of how a lot of poets are f- like just come off as very fake deep. called the, the meaning of zero by amy uyamatsu look i could let me let me say this i could be dumb i could be dumb and i, I might not be getting it it might be a, actually very profound poem by a very profound poet that could be the case and maybe someone can explain to me what's going on here so let me read it to you it could have also been translated from another language. That's that's a possibility. Maybe that's why it's, it's, it makes no sense. <laughs> but to me at least. Let me read it to you. Let me know what you think. A mere eyelid's distance between you and me. It took us a long time to discover the number zero. John's brother is afraid to go outside. He claims he knows the meaning of zero. I want to kiss you. A mathematician once told me you can add infinity to infinity. There is a zero vector, which starts and ends at the same place. Its force and movement impossible to record with rays or maps or words. It intersects and runs parallel with all others. A young man I know wants me to prove the zero vector exists. I tell him I can't, but nothing in my world makes sense without it. Okay. So I'm assuming you have to know what a zero vector is too. There might be something here. There might be some sort of connective tissue. I'm 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 seeing something with the zero vector that might symbolize something else. 
Let's read it again and then and break it down, okay? A mere eyelid's distance between you and me. Okay, so I guess they're, they're very close. That could be symbolic, but that could also be literal. It took us a long time to discover the number zero. So maybe there's a correlation there between the space, physical space, and the, between them, and maybe the, the, the concept she's trying to, of this, of numbers that she's trying to tie in here. John's brother is afraid to go outside. He claims he knows the meaning of zero. Okay, this is where I'm like, who the hell is John? <laughs> who is John? There was no prior, like, there was no setup to introduce John. We don't know who he is. It, they don't really explain afterward who John is, who his brother is. Who's John? Who's John's brother? Why is he afraid to go outside? He claims he knows the meaning of zero. But what does that mean? What is this person trying to say? Then, then after that, she says, I want to kiss you. Okay, so John's brother is afraid to go outside. He claims he knows the meaning of zero. I want to kiss you. I, again, I might be stupid. It just might be me. I mean that. I mean that. I, I genuinely might not be getting it. Someone can explain to me what's going on here. John's brother is afraid to go outside. So we, we let me let me start from the beginning. A mere eyeless distance between you and me. It took us a long time to discover the number zero. John's brother is afraid to go outside. He claims he knows the meaning of zero. I want to kiss you. What is happening? What What is this person talking about? Let's carry on. A mathematician once told me you can add infinity to infinity. Okay. There's a zero vector. Which don't, let's Google zero vector because maybe that means something. Zero vector meaning a zero vector also known as a null vector is a geometrical entity in an in n-dimensional space that has a magnitude equal to zero and points in the opposite direction of the vector's magnitude the sum of all the of of all of the components of this formula is equal to zero i, I, I still don't know do you know? You can watch videos on this, I guess. A vector which is of zero length and all of whose components are zero. Okay. Um. Okay. There is a zero vector which starts and ends at the same place. It's force and movement impossible to record with rays or maps or words. It intersects, yet runs parallel with all others. So, let's read the definition again. A vector which is of zero length and all of whose components are zero. All of whose components are zero. What is a vector, first of all? Before we ask what a zero vector is. What is a vector? A quantity having direction as well as magnitude, especially as determining the position of one point in space relative to another. Okay, so we you know it has something to do with positioning of one thing in, rela in relation to another. A quantity having direction and magnitude, especially as it pertains to pos the positioning of one being in relation to another. Okay, so a zero vector would be what? Something like that, but it is all these components have a value of zero. I don't know what that means. All, all of those components are zero. Of zero length, a vector which is of zero length and all of those components is zero. I don't even know what the hell that is. I still don't know what it is. Like I'm, I'm, I've read the definition, and I might as well not have read the definition because I still don't know. I can't conceptualize it. I don't know what an example of that would be. There is a zero vector which starts and ends at the same place. It's force and movement impossible to record it. Rays or maps or words. It intersects the everyone's parallel. A young man I know wants me to prove the zero vector exists. I tell him I can't, but nothing in my world makes sense without it. I don't. What the hell? What does this poor mean, bro? What is it? Who's John? 
Who's John's brother? Why is he afraid to go outside? He claims he knows the meaning of zero. I want to kiss you. What the? F- what are you talking about? What is this person talking about? Do you know? Do you? Oh man, someone needs to explain this to me. And please, all the fake deep people, stay out of this. Because some people are going to come up with some crazy explanations. I need someone who genuinely, genuinely feels like they understand what's being said here to explain this to me. Because I'm, I'm lost. I'm so lost. Okay, space. It, it, the, there's a theme here of space, of positioning. There's a quote at, at, the, at, at the beginning of this poem from Pablo Neruda. It says, is where space ends called death or infinity? So space, you know, in relationships, sometimes you need space and whatever. Or sometimes you don't want space. You want to be close together. So maybe there's, there's a theme here of space, of distance, of whatever, like some small distance between you. That's actually a huge distance and you can't, you can't bridge that gap. And there might be issues. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what this person is saying. A mere eyelid's distance between you and me. It took us a long time to discover the number zero. So maybe this person is saying like, there's a mere eyelid's... A mere eyelid's distance between you and me. But that little distance is actually a lot of distance. Maybe, I don't know. But then, where where you start to lose me? It says John's brother is afraid to go outside. He claims he knows the meaning of zero. Who the fuck is John? Who who is his brother? John's brother. Maybe, maybe there's this. Maybe. Maybe they. It's not the whole poem. Maybe there's more. She's a third generation Japanese American poet from Los Angeles. Maybe it was translated from Japanese to English. I doubt it, though. She's from L.A. You know these people from L.A. are weird, bro. Oh, all of these. Oh, man. I know for a fact this was not translated from... Okay, I don't know for a fact, but I'm willing to bet money. This is this is written in English. And this girl is just... She's just this. She's just confused. That's my opinion. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Let me be humble. Let me be humble. Let me come. I take that back. Let me be humble. It could be me. I could be the confused one. But I'm reading this. And it seems like the poem is the thing that's confused, not me. What the hell? Bro. How do you get your poems on this side? It can't be that hard. If these are the poems it has. A mathematician once told me you can add infinity to infinity. That doesn't even make sense. Does that make sense? How? You can't do that. Can you actually do it? You can't add in. It's, it's infinity. It's literally an immeasurable quantity. It's just not quantifiable. How can you add something unquantifiable to something else unquantifiable? What would it equal? Infinity plus infinity equals what? It's just, it's more, just more infinity. It's just, like, it doesn't even make, who told you that? Which imagine, let me just go, maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I'm dumb. Can you add infinity to infinity? If we're using the a finely extent, but this is from Quora. Quora.com, you know, the public forum. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, whatever. I don't know what they're about to say, but let's see. Take it with a grain of salt. If we're using the finely extended reals, I don't know what that is, which is the real numbers plus infinity and negative infinity, then yes, infinity plus infinity equals infinity. If we're using the projectively extended reals, a single unsigned infinity equal to the reciprocal of zero, then... Infinity plus infinity is undefined. Man, what the hell?
Hey, you know what? I'm not getting into this because I'm, I'm seeing a lot of. <laughs> Is one plus infinity greater than infinity? I mean, guys, it's literally it's starting to like, it's starting to like space out a little bit. What is this poem, man? I don't know what this poem is about. I don't know what this person is trying to say. I have a basic idea of like space between people. And maybe what this person is trying to say is a little space can actually be a lot and little differences can be big differences. And I don't know, maybe that's what they're trying to get across the point it's trying to get across. But I'll be honest, it's it seems like a bunch of worse shit. It seems like a bunch of nonsense, a bunch of malarkey. Wow. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me get out of here. Dear Father God, thank you for the individual watching this right now. Thank you for making them whole, unique, and guiding them on the path towards peace, prosperity, and purpose. Thank you for blessing this person. What are people in their life who love them, take care of them, bring the absolute best out of them? Thank you for entertaining the ones that are there to do the same thing. Thank you for blessing this person with the spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for all the wonderful things in their life. And by giving thanks, they can find peace, contentment, and attract more blessings. Thank you for letting your presence be Father in this person's life so they know that you're God, that you're real, that you love them, you're going to be there for them. Uh, Good health, long life, and happiness with this person over on the campaign. You might name a pain cheese, and 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 a pain cheese. Just name my brain.